Welcome back. In this video, we are discussing about the reproduction and life cycle of Equisita. As we all know, the plant body of Equisetum is sporophyte, which reproduce by means of two means, that is by vegetative reproduction and sexual reproduction. I repeat, the reproduction in Equisetum is of two different types, vegetative reproduction and sexual reproduction. Vegetative reproduction means reproduce reproduction or multiplication with the help of the vegetative parts. And the vegetative reproduction in Equisetum is mainly by stem tuber formation. And what actually is stem tuber? And these are tuber-like structure that is seen at the nodal region of the rhizome. These tubers encloses certain parenchyma cells which store starch in it. I repeat, stem tubers are tuber-like structure that is seen at the nodal region of the rhizome of equisetum which stores starch in it. After maturity, they get detached from the parent plant and develops into a new sporophyte. And here is a detailed structure of sporophyte showing the rhizome having numerous nodes and inner nodes. From the nodes, stem tuber arises. After maturity, the tubers get detached from the parent plant and develops into a new sporophyte. And this is sexual reproduction. Since the plant body is sporophyte, they reproduce by means of spores. The spores in equisetum is of similar type. So they are known as homosporous form. And spores are developed from spore mother cell after meiotic division or reduction division inside the sporangium. So spores are haploid formed after meiotic division of spore mother cell which are present inside the sac like structure called sporangia. And sporangia are born on a stalk like structure called sporangiophores. And numerous sporangiophores are arranged compactly to form a cone or a strawberry. Here is the picture of cone of equisetum, which are formed by cluster of sporangiophores. So, structure of strawberry or cone. Each cone is seen at the tip of the aerial fertile shoots. Base of the cone, numerous scale leaves, form an outgrowth and that is known as anus. I repeat, anus is an outgrowth that is formed by the scale leaves usually seen at the base of the cone. And each cone is having a central axis on which numerous sporangiophores are arranged as well. And each sporangiophore is having a stalk and a hexagonal peltate disc. At the base of the peltate disc, a ring of 5 to 10 sporangia are present. Here is the structure of cone. Below the cone, scalies forms the annulus. Here is the annulus. So, LS of cone, there is a central axis on which numerous sporangiophores are arranged. Here is the sporangiophores. Each sporangiophore is having a stalk and a head. The base of the head sporangium is present. And each sporangium is having numerous spores which are of similar type. It's the little structure of sporangiophores has a stalk and a peltate head. The base of the head sporangium is present. Inside the sporangium spores are present. The structure of sporangia, it is usually seen at the underside of the peltate disc of sporangiophores. There's two layered wall for protection which encloses homospores. After maturity, the axis of the sporangiophore elongates and sporangium wall shrinks, resulting in the rupturing of sporangium releases of spores. Here is a structure of sporangium having two layered wall for protection, enclosing numerous spore mother cells which undergo reduction division Resulted formation of spores. The spores are of similar type, so they are known as homosporous form. And each spore is green in color, they are spherical in shape, and they are uninucleate or they are haploid in nature. 
because it is formed from meiotic fusion. And each spore is having four layered walls. Very important. The outermost wall layer of the spore is perispore or epispore. And inner to the perispore, middle layer is present. Inner to the middle layer, exospore is present. And inner to the exospore, endospore is present. So the outermost wall layer is perispore. And innermost wall layer is endospore. So epispore has four strips or bands of ribbon shaped structure called elaters. It is very important. The elaters are ribbon shaped structure or strips which are usually seen on the elaters which are attached at certain point on the common point on the epispore. So these elaters are ribbon shaped and usually wrapped around the spores. After the maturity of the spores, the elaters get uncoiled and after absorbing water, they become hygroscopic. The elaters helps to dehyze the sporangium by expansion and contraction. So elaters are ribbon like structure that is seen attached on the epispores which helps to release the spores. Here is the spores wrapped by elaters. After maturity, the elaters become hygroscopic. Absorbing water helps to dehyze the sporangium and releases the spores. So, elaters attached on a common point at the outermost wall layer called epispore. And how does elaters of bryophytes differ from elaters of equisitum? In the case of bryophyte, elaters are present in certain bryophytes and they are formed from complete cells or specialized cells. They are usually deployed in nature and they are sterile and they are spindle shaped and having spiral thickening. But in the case of equisitum, the elaters are produced on the outermost wall layer of the spore called epispores. Since they are developed from the haploid spores, they are haploid in nature and they are ribbon like with spoon shaped tips and they are without spiral thickening. Spore, after maturity, they get released from the sporangium. After reaching the soil, the spore will germinate, result in the production of gametophyte or prothallus. So, gametophytic generation starts with the formation of spores. Here, the prothallus of equisitum is independent, does not depend upon the sporophyte, and it is a highly lobed structure. The upper region is highly lobed and lower regions. And it is monaceous in nature, both Andridia as well as Archegonia is present on the same prothallus. Andridia is usually seen on the lobes, while Archegonia is seen at the lower region. So, the gametophyte generation starts with the formation of spores. Prothallus is monoecious, both Andridia and Archegonia are seen on the same thallus. Andridia usually seen at the lobes of the upper region, while Archegonia is seen on the lower region. The prothallus is protogynous, that means Archegonia mature first or before Andridia. So structure, Andridia, Archegonia seen at the lower region. So, structure of Archegonium. It's a female cetsogon, which is a small neck and a swollen base. The neck surrounded by neck cells consists of one to two neck canal cells. And the base consists of two cells, that is a small ventral canal cell and an egg cell. Here is the picture of Archegonia, flask shaped structure, neck and a venter. Neck surrounded by neck cells. Inside it, venter canal, neck canal cells. Inside the vendor, small vendor canal cell and egg cell is present. Next is Andridia. Andridia of equisitum is usually of two different types, projecting Andridia and embedded Andridia. Projecting Andridia is usually seen on the lobes of upright branches, while embedded Andridia is usually seen embedded on the cushion shaped or lower part of the prothallus. Each Andridia is surrounded by jacket layer, single layered, for protection, protecting numerous androsoids inside it. And each androsoid has a spiral posterior part and a swollen anterior part. The posterior part bears numerous flagella. This andridium 
Anthridium surrounded by jacket layer encloses anthrocytes. And each anthrocytes has a posterior spiral shaped and large anterior and posterior and pairs numerous flagella. So the anthrocytes are multi-flagellate in equisitum. And as this fertilization after maturity, anthrocytes get released from the anthridium, move towards the archegonium, enter through neck and reaches the egg and fuse together to form the zygote. So zygote forms the sporophytic generation. That is the mature anthrospores reaches the egg through neck. So the embryo is formed from the zygote. The first division of zygote is transverse, resulting in the formation of upper apibasal cell and lower hypobasal cell. The development of embryo is exoscopic. That is very important. That means the epicase cell is directed outwards. That is towards the neck of the archegonium. So embryo development is exoscopic in nature. In the case of equisitum, there is no development of suspensor. The epibasal and hypobasal cell forms the four cell quadrant stage from which shoot up its, root up its and Leaf initials are developed. So it's a sporophyte. Numerous sporophytes are developed on the same prothallus in the case of equisitum. This is the life cycle. The life cycle of equisitum has having two generations, sporophytic generation and gametophytic generation. Sporophytic generation alternates with gametophytic generation. The first step is the sporophytic generation formed from zygote. Development of embryo forming new sporophyte. The fertile shoots by us strobile or cone on it. The cone develops sporangia. Inside the sporangia, numerous homospores are developed, which are formed from sporo spore mother cell after meiotic division. So spores are haploid in nature, which marks the beginning of which marks the beginning of gametophytic generation. So, sporophytic generation starts with zygote and ends with the formation of spores. Next is gametophytic generation which starts with the formation of spores and ends with the formation of zygote. So, in gametophytic generation, spores after maturity releases with the help of elators. On reaching the soil, it germinate to form the prothallus. Prothallus is lobed structure. Both anthridium and archegonia seen on the same thallus, monaceous. Anthridium develops androcytes. Archegonium develops egg inside it. The androcytes are spirally arranged, multiflagellate. After maturity, they reach the egg, result in the formation of zygote. So, zygote forms the first step of sporophytic generation. So, in equisitum, sporophytic generation alternates with gametophytic generation. That is, sporophytic generation starts with the formation of diploid zygote and ends with the formation of haploid spores. But, but in the case of gametophytic generation, it starts with the formation of haploid spores and ends with the formation of zygote. It's a pictorial representation, schematic representation of life cycle of equisitum. Develops, starts with zygote, embryo formation, sporophyte. Plant formation, strobilus, develops sporangium, meiotic division, haploid spores, which marks the beginning of gametophytic generation. Spores forming prothallus, monaceous anthridium archegonium develops inside the archegonium egg, inside the anthridium androcytes, fertilization cycle, marks the next generation called sporophyte. So there is an alternation of sporophytic and gametophytic generation in the life cycle of equisitum. That's all. Thank you.